Hi, welcome to lecture four, and we're going to be um, speaking about the effects of disruption of attachment. Um, disruption can also be known as um, deprivation or deprivation. So, in terms of what we mean by um, um, deprivation or disruption of attachment, is when you've had some type of attachment in your life so you've de developed a bond with your primary caregiver for example but then because of reasons like maybe having to go into hospital for a short period of time or they probably have to go into hospital it's been disrupted in somehow so um basically psychologists have talked spoken about um if bowlby based on what bowlby said if attachment is so important within the first two years of life then obviously disrupting it would cause some kind of um, detrimental effects and they talked about the PDD model in terms of how children deal with um, being deprived of their primary caregiver. So first of all, they talked about how the um, child really protests, so they scream, they shout for the first few hours. Um, then they go on to despair. So after a day or two, um, children kind of lose interest and become quite withdrawn. So they don't really want to take part in any type of activities. And then finally, detachment. So um, the child again starts to perk up and starts to play around an environment. However, um, they tend not to trust the caregiver anymore because they'd be like, you left me and I've had to um, do it by myself. So this PDD model has been kind of explained um, when, de when dealing with um, short term disruption of attachment, so deprivation. And a nice way to remember it is PDD model. Right, so um, our key study, there's only one key study for this section because it's such a in-depth study. Um, it's by Robinson and Robinson and um, their husband and wife. And what they've done, they've done um, video recordings of a sample of different children. So we have Laura, John, Jane, Lucy, Thomas and Kate. And what happens, you need to learn all the different scenarios of all these, these different case studies. They looked at these children who have been separated from their caregivers for very short periods of time and they basically within their case studies they found elements of um, issues that probably prolonged their PDD that is their, um, their protest, their um, despair and their detachment. So for example um, Laura because she wasn't given any kind of substitute care um, she had um, nurses change really frequently to support her. She was in hospital um, for a whole eight days and her mum wasn't there. So she was basically left all alone. Nurses kept changing frequently. She had no substitute care. So what happened is Laura was very, very distressed even when her mother did come back for her. So they've done these recordings on these little girl. Apparently she was so distressed that they actually had to stop the recording on her. Um, John, another little boy, who again who was placed in a nursery residential nursery this is a nursery where he actually stayed there because his mom went into hospital and what happened is um john became really really distressed so what he done is um he tried to t attach himself to a nurse but in those in those times nurses were not allowed to form any types of attachments with children so there was no kind of assigned person for him and he didn't actually understand any of this so what he done he like you know poor him he went to seek um solace from a really oversized teddy bear but because an um, attachment has to be reciprocal it didn't actually work because the teddy bear wasn't actually giving him any love back so his case was quite severe because he just refused to eat he didn't play just cried a lot and um he just gave up because nurses were not giving him any attention and even when his mum came back, you can tell, you can see this detachment from the PDD model that John just refused to go to his mum um, anymore. He screams and he tries to get away from her. So that has actually messed John up for a bit. That's actually um, caused problems with his attachment with his caregiver. And then finally, Jane, Lucy, Thomas and Kate. These are the, t um, the children that Robinson and Robinson, so Mr. and Mrs. Robinson, um, they took under their wing. So they were um, their foster carers and um, their parents, their mothers um, were in hospital. So they weren't related, but they, the mothers were in hospitals for different reasons. So what the Robinsons decided to do, they said 
they're going to give them some high level of substitute emotional care. That is that um, they're going to make they're going to act like they're surrogate surrogate parents and try and keep things similar to how the things were at home. So, for example, if they went to bed at seven o'clock at home. They'll go to bed at seven o'clock with them as well. They allow the father to visit regularly so the children can know that, you know, um, there's still links home. And one of the children, obviously, they're taking, she was taken to go and see her mother quite frequently, and that really helped her to settle. So all the children were really, really adjusted well, and they settled with Mr. and Mrs. Robinson. Obviously, they were quite upset. However, um, that none of them did reject their mothers on return. They were quite happy to see their mothers, and even to the extent that they actually loved the foster mother, that is Mrs. Robinson, so much that um, they didn't really want to go. So um, this sh this teaches us basically that um, what um, Mr. and Mrs. Robinson done is it shows us how important it is that even if there is a disruption of attachment, it's very important that um, the children still have high levels of the substitute care available. And also it's helped um, childcare practices or hospital, hospital visitations um, for um, parents. OK, so. Um, in terms of hospitals, back in the day, um, you weren't really allowed to stay over at hospitals, so you probably wouldn't see it days or weeks. So that's changed based on the, um, what we've learned from the Mr. and Mrs. Robinson, that it is really, really important to have a continuation of um, that care, that emotional link home, and you need to have constant visits to see your parents if they're away from you, or they allowed to visit you. Actually, in hospitals now, parents can now have beds and stay with their children. So it's because of these. Um, this particular case study has been so influ influential in um, um, hospital practices and policies. Um, so another, so that is a real world application. Another strength, obviously, of this the, this case study is that it does have high external validity in terms of it wasn't taking it didn't take place in the laboratory. It was in natural settings where the children were. So behavior was normal. Nobody was making up behavior because they knew they were being watched. Everything was all natural. So therefore, we can say it has high it's high in ecological validity. However. We can say it's low population validity because um, Mr. and Mrs. Robinson, they just really focused on British children. And remember, these are case studies as well. And the problem with case studies is that it's very, very difficult to generalise to other types of children. Maybe these children were just unique in some way. Maybe other children, for example, may not be, there may, there may, there may not be no issue with being separated for short periods of time from the caregiver. In fact, some children may actually be happy. It's like we need a bit of separation time. So it's very, very difficult to generalise. However, it has um, told us a lot about what we now need to do when separated for short periods of time from our um, primary caregivers. OK, so that's the end of lecture four. Um, join me for lecture 4A on examination focus of disruption of attachment.